Hi, everybody. I just wanted to record a quick video showing you how to use the dimensional analysis tool that is built into Chem 101. As you may or may not have seen, if you haven't uh, watched the Tools of Quantitative Chemistry video yet, dimensional analysis, I believe, is, is a very, very useful and effective problem solving tool. And I think that Chem 101 has actually a pretty decent platform uh, uh, for dimensional analysis and how to learn it. But it can take a little bit of getting used to. So I just wanted to, to touch on it a little bit with this video. What I would recommend, so here's one of the questions from, your, from, uh, from the practice sets in Chem 101. And what I would recommend, and I actually recommend this with most of your Chem 101 work, is doing the work on a separate piece of paper somewhere and then putting it into Chem 101. And so let's take a look at this one here. And so for safety guidelines, recommends that a bone-in beef roast should cook for 23 minutes per pound at 325. So we want to know how many hours it's going to take in order to cook a 5.17 pound roast. And so when we're setting up our dimensional analysis, again, doing it out on a separate piece of paper first, our starting information here is our 5.17 pounds. Sorry, that five is just going to bug me if I don't fix it. There we go, 5.17 pounds. And if we look at the conversion factors that we have, and I'm not going to talk much about dimensional analysis itself in this video. Watch the other videos for that. Watch the lecture. I'll look at some other, um, other resources for dimensional analysis. But if we look at the conversion factors that we have, we see that we want to go to hours. We're given a cooking time of minutes per pound, though. And so the way the, the progression that we probably want to take is to use our 23 minutes per pound to figure out how many minutes it's going to take to cook this roast, and then a conversion factor to go over to hours. And so we know we have, like I said, 5.17 pounds, 23 minutes per pound. And so conversion, remember conversion factors, 23 minutes per one pound, or we can write it as one pound per 23 minutes. We see that we want to use this form so that pounds will cancel out. And we're left with minutes. So 23 minutes per pound. Pounds cancels out, leaves us with minutes. Next, we're going to want to set up a conversion in there to go from minutes to hours. And so we're going to have one hour per 60 minutes. And then we put that into our calculator. We're going to have ultimately 5.17 times 23 times 1, all divided by 1 times 60. And so we put that into a calculator. And we get an answer of 1.98 hours. And so then we've got to figure out how to put all of this into our dimensional analysis setup in Chem 101. So let's start with our starting information. We're starting with our 5.17 pounds. And so we can either, we can drag that from the question itself or we can drag them from down here, either way. So we can go 5.17 pounds. You'll see with the, the dimensional analysis um, questions in Chem 101 that your, your numbers typically always in blue and your units always in red. Just helps you to, to distinguish them a little bit. Then our next conversion was 23 minutes per pound. And again, we can either rob that from right up here or from down below, doesn't matter. But we're gonna go 23 minutes per pound. Then we have another conversion of one hour to 60 minutes. So we can click the add factor to get another conversion factor in here for us. And so we're going to have one, hour per 60 minutes. And then we want to add in our answer box. There's our answer box. We had 1.98 hours. And so now we would think that the problem is done. So we click show answer. And this unfortunately shows us a wrong answer, shows us that we're incorrect. But our answer here is correct. It tells us that one or more of our factors may be missing a value. Remember to use the number one if it's needed for a conversion factor. And so let's try that again. So we look through all our conversions and we see that in fact, right here, I am missing 23 minutes per one pound. That may seem like, like it's a nitpicky thing, but, but that really is key. 
because that is that was the conversion that we were given was 23 minutes per one pound. Same here. If we didn't have the one in there, we, we need that in there. That, this would tell us that this answer is wrong as well. Same thing. Because we need, to, we need to illustrate that it's 60 minutes per one hour. And that's part of the idea with these dimensional analysis problems in Chem 101. Isn't so much that you get the right answer. I obviously do care about that as well. But they're also designed to, to really just teach you and train you on dimensional analysis itself. And so you might get right answers, but have a wrong dimensional analysis set up. You would get that question wrong. Again, because the point isn't as much the right answer. The point is guiding you through dimensional analysis and teaching you how to use that, that problem solving technique. Let's take a look at one more. Right here. We have a two liter graduated cylinder, which contains 1.4 liters of buffer solution. Gives us the density of that buffer solution. And we wanna know the mass in grams in that cylinder. And so this is a question where we have to sort of look through at, at what information is needed and what is. And so we can see as we lead, read through this, a 2.00 liter graduated cylinder contains 1.4 liters of buffer. That 2.0 liters isn't really necessary information. We don't need it. That's just telling us this is the size cylinder we have, but this is how much actual solution is in there. That's the number that matters. And so that's our starting amount, 1.4 liters. We wanna know how many grams that is. We do have a conversion factor here for density, getting us between grams and milliliters. So that would get us to grams, but we need to be in milliliters first. So we're gonna to need to convert this liters over to milliliters. And so 1000 milliliters per one liter. Then we can use our density, 1.40 grams per one milliliter. We put this into a calculator. We get an answer of something that makes me think I did something wrong. Oh, because okay, I put 1.4. Hopefully you caught me on that. And so let's just go back and fix that because it's actually 1.02. There we go. So I knew that I got something wrong because I got an answer of 1960, which isn't one of my options here. So that was a pretty good indication that I, that I screwed up somewhere and had to go back and take a peek. So 1.4 now times 1,000 times 1.02 gets me 1428. And we're gonna go ahead and round that. We have three significant figures. So this was 1.02, this was actually 1.40. That's key for our significant figures because we have three sig figs here. So we need to round this answer to 1430 in accordance with our significant figures. And so 1430 is one of our options, so that's good. So let's set this up in our Chem 101 setup. So we're gonna start with our 1.4 liters. And then we multiply that by 1000 milliliters per one liter. And then we multiplied that by our 1.02 grams per milliliter. And you'll see this, this is, this is a combination of units, derived units, when we drag those down, it puts them both in for us. And we can see that it shows us how everything cancels out as well. And we're left with grams now, so that's great. We do need to remember to put our one in here, 1.02 grams per one milliliter. Put in our answer of our 1430. Fourteen thirty. Oh, come on. There it is. Fourteen hundred thirty grams. And there we go. And so hopefully th this helps guide you through a little bit uh, of just how to use the dimensional analysis tool in Chem 101. It is pretty powerful. If you really learn this technique and, and let Chem 101 guide you through it, you, you will simply be better off. Dimensional analysis is a tool that that you, I, I think you'll find very useful throughout this whole semester with some very complicated calculations that we will be getting into. And so that is all for this video.
Uh, I hope that it was useful for you.